Okay, we're gonna go ahead and start our reaction. So in the first dish, I have aqueous iron three plus. The spectator ion is nitrate, so nitrate's also there. In the second dish, I have clear potassium thiocyanate. Potassium acts as a spectator. It's also there with the thiocyanate. And then next to it, I have some crystals of potassium thiocyanate that we're gonna play with. Over here, I have a dish. We're gonna mix these two together and create our product, create our equilibrium. And then down here, I have a third chemical called potassium phosphate. And we're gonna use that to drive our equilibrium as well. So the first thing I need to do is put about 20 milliliters of thiocyanate into my dish. So I'm gonna measure that out and put it in the dish. I'll get, this was 10 milliliters. Here is another 10 milliliters. And we'll place that in the dish. All right. Now we have our thiocyanate in solution. I'm gonna take a pipette and add three drops of our iron. So we're gonna add the iron to the solution. We'll go one, two, three. You'll notice there's a color change already. As I swirl this to get it all mixed together, you can see our solution is a darker color. Now that the solution is formed, let's play with the equilibrium. So in this dish, we have iron three plus, we have thiocyanate, and we have the complex ion that they form they're in equilibrium moving back and forth. So we have all three substances there. If I want to make more of one or make less, we can use chemicals involved in that equilibrium to drive the reaction forward or backward. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm just gonna add some thiocyanate crystals and I'm gonna put it right here. And you can see what's happening. With the color change you observed, what does that mean with regards to shifting the reaction back and forth. Which direction did we drive the reaction? Okay, let's go ahead and swirl that one in. We're gonna go ahead and add some more chemicals. Now I'm gonna take this potassium phosphate. Now potassium phosphate is not found in our reaction, but it will interact with the substances in our reaction. So I want you to kind of think about what happens when you see me add this crystal and try to identify what happened. What drove the reaction? So I'm gonna take a little scoop of this guy. I'm gonna put it right here and let it sit for a sec. I'm just gonna swirl it a little. What's happening with our equilibrium? So I'll go ahead and swirl that. Let's go ahead and let's put some more iron three plus in. We're gonna put it right here. What's happening now? What's going on with our experiment? All right, let's try Another chemical, this time I'm gonna put this one over here and I'm gonna place another over here. What's going on? In our solution, where do we find the iron three plus? In our solution, where do we have thiocyanate? Where do we have the complex ion? Another little drop of this right here. And another little drop right here. So we'll go ahead and swirl our solution. What happened? Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the waste. And we'll go back to our original solution. Add a little more of my thiocyanate. And then we'll do 10 milliliters here. And then I'm going to take and add a few drops of the iron. And we'll swirl this up. Our goal now is to examine what happens when we change the temperature. So if I add heat to this mixture at equilibrium, will the reaction drive toward the thiocyanate or will the reaction drive toward the reactants, iron three plus and SCN minus? What evidence would we see if heat drove the reaction toward the products? What evidence would we see if heat drove the reaction toward the reactants? So I have a test tube here and I have a hot plate and I'm going to take a milliliter, maybe two, well, let's do about five. So you can see the solution in the test tube and I'm gonna place it in a hot bath. We're gonna let it sit for a little bit. Here I have a test tube and I'm going to add another five milliliters and I'm gonna let this sit in a cold bath. And after it has sat for a while, 
we'll take a look and see what happens when heat is added and what happens when heat is taken away. We'll let it sit for about three minutes. All right, that's been about three minutes. Here's the test tube from our hot bath. And here's the test tube from our cold bath. What happened? How does heat affect this reaction?